So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can fund every single property deal that you find with none of your own money. There are two main ways that we can do this. Number one is the JV, the Joint Venture Partnership. Number two is to take investment funds from an investor and give a percentage return. Now there's certain pros and cons that I'm gonna go through with you and also certain structures that we can employ, stuff that you can start thinking about and stuff that we can be creative with dependent on the deal that we're trying to do. So first of all, the joint venture partnership. Now this is a great way for beginners. So those just starting out who found a really good deal, go and get a joint venture partnership. The joint venture partner is gonna be way more comfortable than just handing you an investment because you've got no experience. The partner is going to see what you have in you, i.e. time and the ability to appraise a deal, otherwise they wouldn't be looking at it. The idea is that they ideally have some experience and most of all have the money. You will both be jointly responsible for this deal. So that it takes the pressure off you too. So there's another pro as well. What I would recommend for those completely new who have found a deal is do not be greedy on your first deal. I would take as little as 10%, maybe 20, depending on how good the deal is. Get started, learn your craft. And as you do so, you increase the levels. You could even go 80% in your favor with 20% for the person who's funding it if you're so consistently doing good deals. So there's some really good pros. The other pro, as explained, is that it takes a lot of pressure off of you. If you go down the investment route, you are wholly and solely responsible for that investor's money. If you go into a joint venture partnership, then you're gonna both be responsible for the outcome. Another great part of a joint venture is that you can share, and ideally, if you find a joint venture partner that is completely opposing to you, that is the best. That's what I am lucky enough to have now. I am not a numbers guy. I get overexcited about deals. I get overly emotional about deals. I tend to not be able to run numbers all that well. I can do creative deals in my head. I understand how to be able to negotiate and I can market our business super well and get more investments in. When it comes to the crunch and doing the numbers and doing the organization and all the that goes on afterwards, I really fall to the wayside on that side of things. Systems, processes, all of that way above my pay grade that's what my business partner does so that's what i would recommend you look into do not jump into bed with people immediately make sure you take your time and choose this joint venture carefully because you want it to be a long-term relationship so the negatives of a joint venture number one people can change and do change very often it's like picking a life partner a marriage you can see uh, on every film and tv program these horrendous marriage breakups where they used to be you know the best of partners and now they can't even see eye to eye to sort out houses and kids and money it's exactly the same with a joint venture partner you can get into things with people and not really know them that well but get on so well and this whirlwind of amazing exciting things can take over be completely aware that people will change especially when money starts to be made it's really important to be aware of that and the best way to get around that is to make sure that you without a shadow of a doubt get a drawn up legal document explaining the what if this happens and what if that happens and what if i want to get out and what if i make a decision that i think is best for the business and my business partner decides he doesn't want to do that what are the options and get them pre-agreed much like a prenup in a wedding scenario another downside to this is that again as explained you could be 100 percent confident that something that you want to go forward with this thing and that it's of the benefit of the business the other person might think the complete opposite and then where do you go from there when you're using investors funds you are solely reliant and control every part of your business and therefore you can make decisions a split not only can be stressful but it can also affect your ongoing personal brand so if you're anything like me and you are the marketing guy you're the one who's got the personal brand is out there on the internet with videos and stuff a breakdown in in a business partnership can look terrible to you i've been through this and when someone's name is linked to you who then goes on to do stupid stuff or completely f you over and decides to bull about you to everybody they meet it can have a real negative effect on you and when you go and try and do business with people they see you linked to that person or they hear about you via this other person and then it can very easily become a witch hunt and and that is something you want to avoid main thing i urge you to do is just continue to be yourself and be true to yourself because that will come through in all of your content and all of your videos and all your communication with people that you've had years and years of experience with and that's again what we found i've been in the game for 10 years one bad partner 
about us. It's gonna make absolutely no difference to us whatsoever because people have seen from year one through to now and how we deal with our investors and our business partners. So I urge you just to make sure that you are true to yourself and you don't try and go back at these people as well. So. Secondly, is the loan agreement. Now we love loan agreements because what it does is it allows you to have full control of the money. You do with that money as you see fit and as you've told the investor you will, as long as you have a proper bulletproof plan on how to repay that and the interest on time every time. I cannot stress that enough. This business plan of loan agreements, I'm pointing over there because that's where all my script is. I'm a really bad actor, wouldn't I? You have to make sure above all else that your investor gets paid on time and in full as per your loan agreement. Because very quickly, if you don't do that, you ain't working in this business anymore. So we have taken on two and a half million pounds worth of unsecured funds. They are unsecured because we pay a high interest and it allows us flexibility and the ability to bring in the funds super quickly and deploy them as we see fit. You can, however, choose to offer security. So you can also offer a personal guarantee or as the property balance like it's called PJ. This is only really, it only really has a point if you have your own home or investments that can then be reclaimed should you not pay that investor back. If you don't have any, it's kind of pointless. The best charges are first charges. For those who don't know what a first charge is, that's typically what a mortgage company will take on a property. Therefore, if you cannot repay, the property gets taken, and then the proceeds of the sale of that property will be passed over to the first charge. Then it goes to the second charge, third charge, fourth charge, fifth charge, etc. Typically, there are only two charges in most instances. At each level of this investment, you should have a different level of return. So if you offer a first charge because it's the safest, you should offer the least amount. Second charge slightly more, PG slightly more, unsecured slightly more. All of these levels are gonna be give the investor choice. Actually, I really trust you and I see what you're doing and I trust what you're doing. Therefore, unsecured with the most return sounds good to me. They're typically gonna be the guys who have got a lot more to lose and that money, if it disappeared off the face of the earth, they'd be off, but it's not gonna kill them off, you know? Those who are a lot safer, maybe a lot more experienced, have a lot of other things going on, they're gonna go first charge at 6%, please. I don't wanna see that 20% because that must be too good to be true. So I would recommend you get uh, a range of securities and a range of returns for your investor based on their preference. But there is a, a lot of money in the world, even in a downturn, even in a recession, there is a lot of money out there that wants to be deployed to try and beat the inflation. So right now is a great time to do it. The problem you all also have with charges is that they can be complicated to set up and there's a little bit of a play with timescales. Obviously, if you're trying to invest an investor's money on a first charge into the purchase of the property, you have to get that lined up before you agree the property ideally, and then they're not gonna have the first charge until the property's bought, blah, blah, blah. With a second charge, again, you can't put a second charge on the property until you've got the property bought. So if you're trying to refurb a property using second charge funds, you can't do it until you've actually purchased the property. So there's a little bit of a lining up of things, which again is why I find it great to go unsecured, pay really good interest, and then you have the ability to do what you will with that money when you want to. In terms of structure, now this is a really important one. With joint ventures and loan agreements, there can be a million and one structures depending on what you're doing with it. So joint venture structures will typically depend. Are you doing a joint venture based on one project or are you doing a joint venture on the basis of them being a part, a business partner? Because if you're doing it on a project basis, you want to structure the joint venture with whatever works well with your specific deal. For instance, you could say to an investor, straight 50-50, you've got the money, I've found the deal, I've got the experience, therefore, if it's a flip, we'll, 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 um, we'll, we'll split the difference of the, the deal, I'd get half, you get half, simple as that. If it's an ongoing portfolio build that you're wanting to do, then and this can get a little bit more complicated. What I recommend with that, to make it most fair for your investors, is that they put in the money, you find the deals, you do the refurbs, you do everything else, but you don't take a penny on your 50% until your investor has been re repaid back in full. For me, from either side of the coin, that is the fair thing to do. At the point in which you are both equal, you both share the profits. Does that make sense? So the investor would get 100% of the income, so you might refinance that property, they get a big lump, but there might be 10 grand left in it. Property makes a thousand pound profit a month. Month 10, they're paid off in full. Then you split the profits 50-50 moving forward. 
and then the capital appreciation. And if you were to sell, you would split 50 52. Again, these are completely rough guides. You could do 30 70, you can do any split you like. You could say that you're going to go straight 50 50, regardless of whether they've been paid back, because I'm doing all the work. You can structure it in whichever way you like. I would recommend you just sit down with your investor and you do a heads of terms and you write it down. What do you want out of this deal? What do you see is fair? What work, what makes the deal work? Because that's another really important factor. The deal has to work with the structure that is put in place. Now, with loans, again, I've gone into a little bit of structure with the loans in terms of percentages. But again, these can be structured in various different ways in terms of how that investor is actually paid. I.e., what we do is we take the investor's funds and we have a delay before they see a first payment of 90 days. So they won't actually see a return on their money for 90 days. However, on that 90th day, they will get their capital and interest payment. So we do our, our, in, our investments for five years. So they get 60 months worth of return. So that is their capital and their interest repaid every single month after that initial void period of 90 days. This allows us the flexibility to find the deal, buy the deal, renovate the deal, refinance the deal, and cash flow the deal. Once our deal is cash flowing, the investor gets their cash flow too. So this works really well for us. Another option would be that you just paid the interest on a monthly basis with the capital being left until the end of the term, be that one year, three years, five years, however long that may be. You could also say that, actually, I'll pay you from day one that the money lands in my account, but capital and interest will all be paid at the end. You could just pay the interest at the end and then the investor continues to put that same capital back into your project year on year. We've got investors that do that too. So as you can see, there's so, so many ways to skin a cat. However, your deals may be different. They may be different every time and you can structure your deals different every time also. What I would recommend though, is that you keep your finger on the pulse in terms of raising finance. Do not wait until you've got a deal to raise the finance because you'll lose the deal because you'll be too late. The problem is there's always this chicken and egg. Do you find the investor first or the deal? I personally think you continue to raise funds and when you get into conversations with those investors, be completely open and honest and explain that you're currently looking for a project and that now you've got half a buy-in from them, you can start to get something a little bit more solid in place. That would be a really good place to start, especially as a beginner looking to raise funds. So I hope you found that really useful. Qu pretty quick, short, sharp video, tons of information, a load of complications that you're probably gonna frazzle your head a little bit. Above all else, understand this fact. Leveraging other people's money will be the best thing you ever do if you get it right and you have a plan in which to do it. It will be the worst thing you ever do if you don't pay back your investors in full and on time. In an ideal world, we pay them back early and we pay them back in full. That is the best way to go about this. We want to under promise, over deliver every time with everything we do. Get a plan in place and trust me on this. Do not take other people's money for granted. Don't treat it as if it's not yours. Treat it as if it is exactly yours and that if you lost it, it would be the worst thing in the world because it should be. I've been in that situation where I nearly lost money many years ago and there's a video here um, which explains one of my biggest losses, which was a over £100,000 of lost money. I managed to structure it back in a way that the investor then eventually got paid back. Let me tell you one thing, the feeling in my stomach when that deal was going wrong, the guilt and the stress and the depression, and the, it was the worst feeling I've ever had in my life and it changed me as a person like that. Even with joint venture partnerships have vowed to pay back joint ventures even though they were jointly responsible and I didn't have to do it I have continued to tell them that I will not have my joint venture partner lose money because of a decision I made and that is something that I think even when I didn't have money at all I made sure that that was part of what I said and what I did and that gives people confidence now today when things are going well to invest in me because they know that I'll do the right thing even if it goes to up. So right at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to find investors, where they hang out, and how easy it truly is to start conversations with investors so that they can invest in your property deals. In the meantime, make sure you hang on for the end of that video. It's going to be really important. And in the meantime, click the subscribe button for me and comment below if you found this useful. And if I can help you at all, I certainly will. So finally, where do you actually find investors? We've done all the boring legals joint ventures, blah, blah, blah. Where do I actually find the money? Where's the money? And the fact is, money's everywhere, literally. I found money from cab drivers, Uber drivers. I found money from old school friends. 
Um, it's about having conversations with everywhere you go. I'm not talking about going to specific networking events and then talk about investments. You can do this at golf events. You can do this at when you go and watch your kid play football and you're talking to the dads there. When you go to a family barbecue, talk, have conversations about what you do and how you help your investors. And I promise you, they will be the best conversations because you're not pushing anything. Something I know you're gonna prefer, a much more direct version. Facebook groups, absolutely insane. So here's some tips on Facebook groups. Join a load of them, get involved in what they do, i.e. don't just sell, sell, sell. Help the people that are in there if you can and post hack. So one of my favorite ways of finding investors is post hacking. So if someone says, I've got 300 grand, what would you do in this uh, market? And then I go in there and I say, I would go down the social housing route. In the current climate with utilities going up and interest rates flying up and the cost of living, we use social housing association contracts, which give us 10 years of predictable income, regardless of what happens to prices. What that does is start to, people then see your comment and they'll say, DM me please, DM me please. That's what you need to do. Start having those conversations make sure you've got a Calendly or similar and that they can just book a call with you. Start having conversations, telling people what you're looking to do and how you can help them with their interests and, and you know um, investing their money without stress and without hassle and, and what your plan is. Finally, try and give your business a purpose. The biggest thing we found with our investors is that they not only wanna make a big interest, but they also wanna make a big impact on the world. What we are trying to achieve is that we want to help a million vulnerable people find, find a safe place to live in the UK. And the investors absolutely love that too. They love the ability to help. They know that they're helping people who need it the most. And we're going to be able to take the stress out of doing that because it is stressful. And they're also going to make a really good interest on their money while they do it. So hopefully that was loads of information for you. If you've never raised money before, comment below. I'm more than happy to help you get over some of the hurdles and the worries and the stresses. But ultimately, just have conversations with people and get them over the line in whatever structure works for the deals that you have or the business plan that you have. So I'll see you soon at the next video when you've made loads of money and invested loads of money. Um, and I'll see you soon.